Robert, yes. tomorrow we will be cleaning the church and the Family Life Center for homecoming. So anybody that can come help us, we'll be here at 8, probably till, I don't know, 1 or so. Uh, even if you can't come at 8, any time you can come help out, that would be great. If you're going to dance for me, I'll come. Okay. And also, um, I got a call from uh, Christian King's mom. She works with FEMA and all that that's going on. And they have case managers. They have assign they're assigning to these people that are getting ready to get these new homes. And what they'll be doing is they'll be referring people where they can get help with different things. And we are going to be listed as a clothes vendor for these people that are getting these homes. And anyone that needs clothes will be able to contact us and we'll set up a time for them to come look. All right, anything else? Nothing else. Uh, I can't have to leave this in the Most gracious, loving, made of fire, the Lord will come to you with hearts of thanksgiving for all that you give us. Lord, we just thank you for the opportunity we have to meet together in your name. Lord, we just pray that you take control of this service. Talk to us through the hands, through the message, or we pray to you prepare our hearts for the 
this weekend, Memorial Day, uh, there were a lot of services uh, remembering those that were fallen, uh, that gave their lives uh, for this great nation. Uh, there were services all over the country, and I'm so proud of that. I'm still proud of our flag. I'm still proud of our nation. I believe that God's hand is still on this nation, as evil as it is. We see evil all around us, but God is still alive. He's still on the throne. Uh, I want to thank uh, Brother Allen. Uh, I know he don't want any credit for it, but Allen's been working hard on the fans over there. He's got two of them up. i got one to go with. Uh, thank you, Allen, for what you're doing there. <laughs> People behind the scenes, we don't see a lot of time, but a lot of women were over here uh, yesterday uh, doing a lot of stuff, getting ready for vacation Bible school and uh, making stuff and uh, getting everything prepared for the kids coming in Saturday and uh, I, I thank God for a church that loves to work and do things for the Lord. Uh, I want to ask you a question tonight. Before we begin, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach tonight for just a moment on uh, the subject, I guess I titled it, Stay on Fire for Your Moses. Uh, what brought you here? Have you ever thought about that? What actually brought you here? Uh, I'll be preaching that to you this morning. All right, turn with me in your Bibles to Exodus chapter 3. Exodus chapter 3. I saw something in this that maybe I, I've never seen, never looked at it in this light before. And I want to try to share it with you the way God gave it to me. I uh, never thought about it this way really, but uh, it, it's, uh, it's different. Uh, Exodus chapter 3. One through four, I think it is. Now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law. Uh, let me read that again. Did y'all know he married a hillbilly family? <laughs> <laughs> I just read it. <laughs> now Moses kept the flock of Jethro, his father-in-law, the priest of Midian, and he led the flock to the backside of the desert and came to the mountain of God, even to war. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him in a flame of fire out of the midst of a bush. And he looked, and behold, the bush burned with fire, and the bush was not consumed. And Moses said, I will turn now, uh, now turn aside and see this great sight, why the bush is not burned. And when the Lord saw that he turned aside to see, God called unto him out of the midst of the bush and said, Moses, Moses. And he said, here am I. Father, we thank you tonight for being so good to us this week, meeting our needs, giving us a time of rest and enjoying the families. Uh, God, uh, every time we turn around, we see your goodness, your faith in our lives. Lord, I, I thank you, God, for this church, what it means to me. God, the people here in this church, God, you love them so much. Yeah. Lord, they love you. They, they love to work for you. God, I, I believe that uh, this is one of the greatest churches in America today. They love you that much, Lord, and uh, they believe in you. And God, they would, uh, they would even give their lives for you. Father, I thank you for that. Lord, continue to bless us. As we look at this passage tonight, Lord, I think maybe we might see a little bit of ourselves in this passage. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> Moses, as a little child, his mother, Jochebed, <laughs> by faith, took her child and sent him down the Nile River in a little basket. Not knowing his future. Not knowing uh, if he would live or die. Believing God that God would make a way where she couldn't see a way. Because if she realized that she kept the child, more than likely Pharaoh would have him killed. And his life would be ended. But God had a plan. I mean, you know that God has a plan all the time. Yeah. Moses was taken 
to Pharaoh's palace after he was older, raised by his own mother. And uh, Moses became aware of his surroundings, but Moses never forgot who he was and where he came from. He saw one of his brethren, a Hebrew, being killed when they were being slaughtered, and uh, he turned and he killed an Egyptian and sent him fleeing into the desert. And for 20 years, he was on the backside of the desert, and he married and uh, was tending and became a shepherd. Isn't it odd that uh, most of the people that we read about uh, in the Old Testament, most of the ones that God used were shepherds? Y'all ever think about that? Why is that? They knew what it was like to lead a flock. And God was looking for somebody that could lead a flock. And so Moses is on the back side of the desert tending his father-in-law, Jethro's flock of sheep. He's a fugitive. He's, he's actually running from the Egyptian law. And he, he hides out in the desert. Uh, he's, he's been ostracized. He's, he's been... Uh, 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 set out aside from a society. He, he can't go back to his family. Uh, he, he's in an isolated place in his life where uh, most people wouldn't understand, but there's some people in this room tonight uh, that I believe can understand how, what Moses must have felt like uh, when he was uh, thrown into this part of his life, taken away from his family, isolated, and, and thrown into the wilderness, uh, and not knowing if he would ever come out of the wilderness. But then God looked down and he saw Moses. See, I, I believe that God's plan, it, it was just taken, see, sometimes we get in a hurry, and we, we want God to reveal all the plans of our life this week. Uh, so we know what's going to go on two years from now, three years from now, but God don't work that way. That's right. Uh, he, he waits and He gives you just enough to, to keep you interested. And that's why I ask you, uh, why, why are you here tonight? What, what draws you to this church? Uh, you're, you're thinking about that. <laughs> While you're thinking about that, I'm going to preach to you. But Moses is on the backside of the desert, and he's, he's really hiding out. And doesn't think that uh, God is anywhere around him. He didn't forget about God. Uh, but he hadn't talked to God in quite a while. And so he looks up one day out there in the burning heat of the desert. And he sees a bush. Now what wasn't uncommon in the desert for lightning to strike a bush and a bush would burn. Uh, that, that wasn't uncommon. What was uncommon was the bush was on fire. But it didn't consume the bush. The bush just kept on burning. And the longer he looked at the bush, the brighter it got. And so the Bible says that he turned aside to go and see why the bush was not consumed. So we, we, what, I, what I want to try to tell you tonight, uh, look at it, this bush that God used. God used this bush to draw Moses to the light. And so, what do we see uh, out of this bush? Let's look at it through God's eyes. God has caused this bush. He set it on fire. For what reason? He's fixed it to call a man out of the darkness, out of the backside of the desert. He's fixing it. He's calling him. Uh, when, he, when he came uh, to the bush, he called, we see he called Moses into ministry. Out of a burning bush. You say, well, what's that got to do with us? I believe that at any given Sunday, we've got people in this very auditorium that should be looking at the burning bush and wondering why it's not being consumed. They need to look at the light that's shining around them, the people around them. You are a burning bush tonight. That's the reason most of you are here. You saw somebody that was on fire and wasn't being consumed, and you drew them into this church because they saw a light that they had never seen before. It's called the gospel light. Jesus this bush 
was not being consumed. Moses turned. So he calls Moses into this. But what, what do we see in, in this? He not only called Moses, what, what, what he called was, he, he was, God was looking for a man that was willing to be a mediator. He was looking for a man that was willing to negotiate uh, with a people uh, that was lost. He, he was looking for a, a man that was willing to go down and, and uh, really uh, put his life on the line uh, so that a lost people, so that a nation could be. He was looking at a nation out of this bush. God saw not only Moses, but he saw a nation that was being afflicted. You, you check it out over there in the, in the next few verses. Uh, and he said, I saw the affliction of my people. And so he lit this bush on fire so that Moses would be drawn to the bush. And, and uh, can I tell you tonight that a lot of us, when I come to church, I, 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 I stand up here and, and uh, the light of God begins to illuminate. When I get in this pulpit, uh, the fire begins to uh, 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 come up in my bones. It's like a fire, Jeremiah said, that's shoved in my bones. Yeah. I can't contain it. And folks, listen, if, if I'm your burning bush tonight, I, I don't, I'm not nobody, but if I'm your burning bush tonight, and whoever you're sitting with, if they're, they're your burning bush, don't let them burn up. Don't let them get the fire go out. Keep the fire burning, because the world needs to see Jesus in me and you. That light never let out. That bush wasn't consumed. So what did the bush do? Out of that bush came the voice of God. Didn't it? Yeah. yeah. The voice of God came out of that bush. The truth, the word of God came out of a burning bush. What do you think this church is doing today? The word of God is coming out of the burning bush of Pryorsburg Independent Methodist. The word of God is coming out of the bushes that he set on fire. You and you and you. You're a bush burning for God. And the word of God ought to be rolling out. And people ought to be called into service because they see you as that burning bush. That's right. You see the word of God. We see a nation that needs to be delivered from that burning bush. Can you not see today that we have a nation that we're living in that needs to be delivered from a burning bush? From the very word of God, from the truth of God's word. That's what this may listen. We don't need more gun laws. We don't need more reforms. We don't need more aid. We don't need more stuff sent to us. Listen to me. We need the truth of God's word sent to the American people for this nation to be what God intended it to be. Right. Amen. It's gonna come through a burning bush. Proceed. Why did God choose that particular bush? I don't have an answer for you. The same way I don't have an answer for you, why did He choose you to be a burning bush? You see, God will choose any old bush He wants to if He can set it on fire and it not be consumed. You see, the problem is a lot of times we get on fire for God. And, and men and women begin to call, listen, I, I asked y'all to pray for me Sunday night. Y'all remember why? Y'all remember me? Yeah, because the men means in jail. I was headed to jail as soon as I left this service. I went down there, and there was around 10 or 12 men in that service. And I got there late. And I walked in, and I shook hands with all of them, and I grabbed my Bible, and I began to preach. When I got done preaching, I thought, man, I sure made a mess of that. <laughs> then I gave an invitation, and that one man, 30 years old, said he had never heard the gospel preached before. Gave his heart and life to Jesus. Why? Because God sent a burning bush down there to burn that wasn't consumed. I, I'm not trying to tell you I'm somebody. I'm nothing. I'm the least of the servants of God. But listen to me. If we'll just let God light us on fire, God will lead those people. He'll bring them to a place. They'll turn aside from what they're doing and come to that burning bush. That's why you're here tonight. You turn aside from the world and came to a burning bush. A place called Friarsburg to find 
Jesus' voice in your life. Amen. We see out of that burning. You see, I believe there were some other burning bushes in, in the Bible. I believe Noah was a burning bush. Noah preached for a hundred years to the people and told them that they were going to die. It was going to rain. And they would all be consumed if they didn't repent and turn to God. But nobody believed Noah was a burning bush. I believe that David was a burning bush. I believe David was a man after God's own heart. And he did some wrong. He did some terrible wrong. But God never quit love. Listen to me. You, 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 uh, you beat yourself up and you do stuff that, that's absolutely wrong. And you fall flat on your face and you make a mess out of your life. But like David, uh, David fell on his face and repented and said, God, forgive me. I know I've sinned. I've sinned against heaven and you. And now listen, when you do that and you're serious with God, God will pick you back up and he will still use you. Don't you give up. Don't you quit. Oh, yeah. You still up. Let God light you on fire one more time. Amen. Amen. David was a burning bush. Esther, in her season, was a burning bush. She was willing to go before the king, risking her own life to be a light shining in darkness. She's a great example of a burning bush. I believe Elijah was a burning bush to Elisha. I believe Moses was a burning bush to Joshua. You see, all these people, they saw something in the ones that go on before them. And they saw the flame in their lives that couldn't be extinguished. Oh, listen. As we look at this burning, what did this burning bush do? It, it called us uh, out of darkness. It, it called Moses uh, to the ministry and, and it gave him direction in his life. And you see, uh, he, God told him, He said, after he called us to the ministry, He said, now I'm going to tell you where I'm going to send you. He said, I want you to go down and free my people out of Egypt. He gave him direction. He took him out of the backside of the desert. And said, I'm going to give you a task to do. I want to send you on a task. I want you to go down and be my mouthpiece and get my people out of bondage. And, and Moses, Moses had just, he's standing there. The bush is still burning. Well, I can't do that. I can't do that. Every one of us has said that to God. Yeah. Lord, I can't do that. Oh, Lord, don't call me to preach. I can't do that. I said the very same thing. And uh, don't call me to teach, Lord. Uh, don't call me to uh, go witness, Lord. Don't, don't call me to do. Lord, just let me sit on a pew. I don't want to do nothing. That's what we all are. But people can't see you burning from that pew. That's right. That's right. You need to be living up for Jesus wherever you go, especially in your home. If our world ever needed mamas and daddies to be on fire for Jesus it's today. Because you see, what I see in this, Mo, he called Moses for to go and get his people out of him. And Moses did what God called him to do. Out of this burning bush, he called a man. Out of this burning bush, he gave this man direction. Out of this burning bush, he gave him what he needed uh, to accomplish the task. He gave him everything. He said, what do you got in your hand? He said, well, I just got an old stick. He said, throw it on the ground. And he threw it on the ground and it became a serpent. He saw out of this burning bush, he saw the miracles of God that could be accomplished if he would just say, yes, God, I'll go. But not only that, if you look on beyond his time, you see God, I believe God knew that the generation that he was sending Moses to get out of Egypt was never going to see the promised land. In other words, what I'm trying to tell you, out of that burning bush, he saw a generation ahead that was going to come to the promised land. The one that he was sending to. He said, yeah, I want you to go get them out. But they're not going to the promised land. They're not going to make it. They're going to wander 40 years in the desert. I'm going to give you direction. I'm going to give you what you need. I'm going to feed you. I'm going to do it. I'm going out of that burning bush. I see the hand of God moving in every aspect of Moses' life. Everywhere he went, he struck the rock and water came out of the rock. And by the way, that rock is still giving forth water. 
today. Everything that he needed, it was in that burning bush. Who is that burning bush? That was the living God in that burning bush. And so that, that, that being said, I believe that you and I and this church is a burning bush in this community. I believe the world is looking at us and saying, are they for real? Do they really believe that stuff they read? Do they really believe that Bible? Uh, what, what, what are they doing? We see them doing work and all kinds of stuff. We have people drive by. Well, I see cars down here all the time. What are y'all doing? And so we're just loving Jesus and doing the hands and feet and do whatever it takes to bring people to Christ. That's what we do. We don't want to be a burning bush for God. And I believe that this church is a burning bush that never going to stand. God told me in His Word that His church will never ever be destroyed. Amen. You're going to burn forever. But the good news is, it ain't in heaven. You're going to burn for the glory of God. As long as you have breath in you. Because God has chosen you as His burning bush. Folks, listen. We've got people out here in our community that need to see that bush burning. That bush not being consumed. Because see, the problem we have is too many people get on fire and then all of a sudden the flame goes out. They're, they're spent. The bush is burning. <laughs> And there's nothing left. And all they see is the charred remains of their life where they get entangled in this world and sin overtakes them. Oh, they did good for a little while, but now their life is a wreck. And all the world can see in them is the charred remains of a bush that used to be on fire, but now it's just a bunch of old, dirty branches. Oh, listen, the world don't need to see that tonight. The world needs to see you and I on fire and burning and not being consumed, rising up every day and saying, Lord, I'm going to follow you with my life. I'm going to do what you called me to do. I'm going to go get and deliver your people out of captivity. Why do you think I'm going to jail on Sunday night? To deliver the captives that are in bonds down there in sin. And folks, it's no different right here. We've got people in this church that need to be delivered from lots right. of sin. That's right. We must be the light of God's burning bush. The Word of God has to come out of that bush. For a job, not just for this generation, but for a generation to come up after yeah. us. They need to know. Uh, but we need to set those stones just like Joshua did when they crossed over into the promised land. What did he do? He took those stones and piled them up. And when he said, when your uh, ancestors come, when your, your people come in the future, and they're going to ask you, what do these stones mean? And you're going to tell them that what God did in your life. Oh, listen. I believe years down the road, your kids and your grandkids will be talking about my old papa that went down to that little church in Priorsburg. And they was on fire for God. They believed in a holy God. They didn't quit. They didn't back up. Listen, this little burning bush here, God has sent two floods trying to put it out. Yeah, he has. If the water was up on top of the pew one time in here. But you know what? Our little light just kept on shining. It was pretty dim, but it kept on shining. We united together and we became a one burning bush and we began to show the world that we wasn't going to back up. We wasn't going to quit. We started rebuilding process and God provided everything. We, he called us out of the burning bush and tried to flood us with it. But nevertheless, the old devil didn't get the victory. We're still here. And we're still burning. Listen, I just want to tell you tonight. If you'll stay on fire for your Moses, like that little bush did for Moses, you'll see people come through. I see new people come through these doors every Sunday. Why? Because they're seeing some bushes that's on fire. They're seeing some of y'all that are on fire for Jesus. They're seeing a light in some of y'all that they ain't seen in nobody else. They ain't seen it in other churches. Oh, it, it might have it might have sounded good in other churches. It might have looked good in other churches, but they're not seeing the real, true word of God coming forth out of the pulpit. They need to hear and believe that there's a burning bush somewhere that they can come and find the calling in their life and find the direction in their life. And I believe that we are one of those people or one of those churches that the 
the truth is coming forth. But see, I ain't got enough sense to tell you anything, do I like to tell you what the Bible says. And what I see out of this burning bush. You see, a bush that's consumed. A bush that lets it fire go out. It can't produce Christians. Cold bushes don't produce Christians. Folks. Hot bushes produce Christians. They multiply. We're like the flock of sheep. What do sheep do? They make other sheep. What do we do? We bring Christians into the light out of the darkness. And so we must be that burning bush. We are that burning bush. We're the ones that God wants to use. And I'm not saying up here telling you we're the only church that's on fire. There's churches in this community all around them that are simply, truly on fire for God. But every once in a while, we need to turn up the flame so that we can see who we really are. Not be just another service. Not just come to church and sing another song. Not just go through another service and say, well, that, that was good. I go home and lay my head down. Now, all is good in my life. No, not everything's not good in your life. There's too many lost people in the world in our community tonight that need to know that there's a God in heaven. That young man Sunday night said he had never heard the gospel preached. Listen, he was two miles, three miles away. How are we going to quit? How are we going to stop? We must be the burning bush for people. They need to know who we are. I believe that the nation that Moses saw, God saw out of that burning bush, he, when he saw Moses, he said, here's a man that I can use and I'm going to bring my people out of bondage. I'm going to give him a calling on his life. I'm going to give him direction in his life. And I'm going to give him the grace to go in and face that old Pharaoh. He went in and faced Pharaoh ten times. But on that tenth time, God said enough's enough. And he sent that tenth plan and sent the Israelites packing out of Egypt. Their bondage was finally broken. But listen to me. <coughs> they didn't get very far. And they began to complain to Moses. They began to talk to that burning bush that led them out of bondage. And said, what you lead us out for? We could have died there. We had stuff to eat there. You left us out here in the desert to die. Moses says, stand still and see the salvation of the Lord. Yeah. And they crossed that Red Sea because of God's miracle. You see, I believe out of that burning bush, God looked way on in time and he saw down the road the things that he was going to do in that burning bush's life, in Moses' life, when he turned aside to see that bush, he couldn't see the future, but God saw his future. You can't see the future in somebody that's burning beside you tonight, but God can. He can see the future that he has for you, and I believe, folks, that if you'll get right with God and depend on God with your life, he'll show you, right? not only will, his word says, Jeremiah 33, 3, says, call on me, and I'll show you great and mighty things. Make sure your fire stays lit. I don't know. I don't know who God's calling. I, I've seen many people come out in the last 16 years. I've seen many people being called into the ministry right here in these views. Why? Because God had lit this place like a bush and they saw the glory of God moving in your life. They saw something that they wanted and needed in their life. I believe Moses saw what he needed in that life. He didn't know what to do with it, but he saw it. And he believed when he heard the voice of God. And see, the burning bush, the church, that's what they want to hear. They want to hear the voice of God. They want to hear God speaking to them making them away, changing the direction of their life. They want to see their lives change. You see, Moses, down in the backside of the desert, I no doubt he'd been there 20 years, he was ready for a change in his life. He wasn't ready for what God had, but he was ready for something. And he moved by faith, believing God, that God would take him where he needed to go. 
and use him for his glory. And you and I are no different than each other. We need to be burning bushes for God. You say, God can't use me. Oh, God will never pick me. God, I, I, I've done so many things. God would never use me. Listen, God used that old bush in the middle of the desert. If he can use that any old bush out there, he can use you for his glory. And he will. If you'll submit your life to it, you say, God, here I am. What Moses say? Lord, here am I. Yeah. We need to be saying the same thing. Lord, here am I. If you can use me, God, let me be a light. Set me on fire, God, so that the world can see Jesus in me. Come on, we're going to see. I don't know about you, God, but as I, as I was reading this one more time and thinking about Moses' life, how God called him. And he went out and joined himself to Jethro, his father. -in -law, and became a, just a lowly shepherd, herding sheep. Thinking probably that he's going to stay in that desert the rest of his life. Never coming out. And all of a sudden, he saw a light shining on the hillside. A bush that wasn't being consumed. And he turned aside, and God called him out of that bush. He called him out of the desert of his life. Is he calling you out of the desert of your life tonight? I believe you may be. Answer his call. Go to the bush and say, Lord, I need you. You can find that bush right here on these old people's time. This all. Would you stand with me? Submit your life to Christ. Say, God, if I'm your bush, let me burn. God, I know people in my family that need to see the light. They need to see me burning more brightly than I ever have. Oh, God, light us on fire tonight. Let us lay on fire for our Moses. I don't know who your Moses is. But I promise you, if you will submit your life to God, God will show you who your Moses is. He'll show you through that burning wood, that light in your life. And He'll bring the word, word of God forth out of you, just like He did that bush. And the world will see Jesus in your heart. You come tonight. Oh, I thank God.
This is the fuel station for B. Lighter Bush. That's right. Gas don't cost you nothing here. <laughs> Amen. Any word from anyone else before we go? Ain't God good? And all the time? God is good. God is good. Go, Doc. This one's great. I have a part with them. I was going to thank you for all of the many places. Patience, then if you're not done working, God, I'm not done waiting. 